This is a Lenovo ThinkPad X260 that I picked up on eBay for about €160. Euros. Although in general I've been very happy with the computer, there's one thing about it that I hate. The screen is a TN panel with terrible viewing angles, low brightness and a resolution of only 1366 by 768 So in this video I'm going to be upgrading it to a Full HD IPS panel. The first thing that we need to do is turn the computer off by selecting shut down from the windows menu. Once it has completely powered down, disconnect the power cord, shut the lid and then turn the laptop over. Remove the battery by pushing the levers at each side towards the edge and pulling it straight out. Because the X260 has dual batteries, we now need to disable the internal battery. Turn the laptop back over and press the power button. When you see the Lenovo logo, press the enter key which should bring you to the startup interrupt menu. And you can enter the BIOS by pressing F1. Once in the BIOS, select the config menu, then select power then move down to disable built-in battery. Press enter here and you'll be asked if you want to proceed. When you select yes, the computer will power off with the internal battery now disabled. This is essential if you want to safely work on the laptop without the risk of shorting something. Now we need to remove the screen bezel. I've seen people using all sorts of tools to do this, from screwdrivers to guitar picks. But I found that the easiest way is to simply insert your fingers into the gap between the bezel and the screen and pull up to disconnect the clips. Try to pull straight up rather than at an angle to avoid breaking or bending the bezel because it is quite thin and fragile. Work your way around the edge and the top and then release the bottom clips last. You can then remove the bezel and put it to one side. The LCD panel in the X260 is only held in place by the bezel, there are no screws anywhere. So with the bezel removed you can just hold the screen by the top, rotate it down and carefully lie it face down on the keyboard while you disconnect the LCD cable. There's a piece of clear tape covering the connector that needs to be removed first. Just peel it up from one corner to get access to the connector. It's held in place by a metal lever. Insert something plastic to pry the lever up and rotate it back. Now the connector can be removed by holding the pull tab and pulling it straight back away from the socket parallel to the board. The screen can then be removed. At this point I discovered a problem. This is the screen that I removed from the laptop. It's an IVO panel that's 290.5mm wide according to the datasheet. So when looking for a new IPS screen I specifically ordered the LG LP125WF2 because according to the datasheet for that panel it has the exact same width of 290.5mm. Unfortunately, what the eBay seller actually sent me was the Inelux N125HCE, which only measures 282mm. That means that the new screen was 8mm shorter than the old screen. This is most obvious if I place the new screen on top of the old one. You can see a clear size difference between the two panels. Now I could have returned the new screen but I was actually very happy with all the other panel specs so I decided to keep it. When placing the screen into the lid normally it would rest against these plastic pieces on each side to prevent it from moving around. But because the new screen is smaller I was left with a gap of 4mm on each side of the panel. 
what he ended up doing then was using this rubber strip which originally came from Ikea and has 3M adhesive already on the back. I cut it into pieces exactly 4mm wide and attached them inside the lid next to the existing plastic pieces. This would keep the panel firmly in place and centred. I also had to attach small pieces to the top and bottom. I was then ready to install the new screen. Place it carefully face down on top of the keyboard, then line up the connector with the socket and push it straight into place. Once it's been pushed all the way in, rotate the metal retaining clip down to hold it securely in place. You can then replace the tape over the top of the connector. In my case the tape was no longer sticky, so I took a fresh piece of tape and placed it over the top. Now, before replacing the bezel, I first wanted to test that the new screen was actually working. Reattaching the power cable will automatically re-enable the internal battery. After pressing the power button, I could see the Lenovo logo and then the Windows boot logo. So I was satisfied that the new screen was working. I turned the laptop off again to replace the bezel. To make sure that the screen was centered, I loosely put the screen bezel in place first to check that it was in the correct position. Satisfied that it was ok, it was time to remove the plastic covering from the screen. I also gave the webcam cover a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip to remove any dust that might have got in there. When replacing the bezel I found it best to have the screen opened to around 110 degrees, then position the bottom part between the two hinges, making sure not to trap the LCD cable. With the bottom part of the bezel correctly in place, you can work your way around the edges and top, pushing straight down on the clips until you hear them click into place. Finally, I gave the new screen a wipe with a lens cloth to remove the fingerprints that had got on there while I was replacing the bezel. And that was it, job done. In total this upgrade took me about an hour. It would have been much less if I'd been sent the screen I actually ordered, but overall I'm very happy with the new screen. The difference between this and the old TN panel are like night and day. This panel has much better viewing angles, it's 50% brighter and it has vastly superior colour in addition to the higher resolution. If you own a ThinkPad X260 with a TN panel, this is an upgrade that's well worth doing. I'll leave links to the screen and the tools I used down in the video description. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.